What's up guys, I'm Cody and today I'm going to talk about my ankle break injury. I'm assuming if you're watching this video you've either broken your ankle, uh, you're in the process of going through your recovery, or you're just curious of an ankle break injury. So let's start off. Uh, I actually filmed this video a couple weeks ago, a similar video just like this, but I feel like now I have a little more perspective on the whole situation, so we're going to go and give my whole story about how I broke my ankle, what has happened, and uh, the journey that it's been. Okay, so first off, what type of ankle break injury did I have? Well, if you read this tile, you can see that I had a trimalleolar fracture with dislocation and some ligament damage. So this is the big daddy of them all. Uh, I broke three bones and dislocated my ankle, which resulted in nerve damage and ligament damage as well. But all right, so let's get started. Let's talk about how it happened and let's go from there. All right, so it was July 3rd, 2017. I was mountain biking at my friend's pump track. And there's actually a video of this pump track in my channel if you go check it out. Um, if you can see from the pump track video, and I can include some footage right now, there is not really big jumps at all. They're very small and they're just really fun and friendly to play on and just try to learn new tricks. Um, so nothing crazy and it's just a super comfortable set of jumps and a little pump track area. Well, I was doing one-handers over, there's a second jump, a little double, and it was such an easy jump to do one-handers on. I've done one-handers on step-ups. Hope there's a picture popping up right now of me doing a step-up one-hander. Uh, a day before my ankle injury, I did a one-hander at a skate park on a, a concrete table jump, and then, and, and then this double right here on dirt. So I was very comfortable with one-handers. I have done, I was doing actually like five, six, or seven of them before this accident. I was just repeatedly doing one-handers just because they're so comfortable and I just love the trick. Well, when I was doing the one-hander on my last run, I was going and as I was going out for my extension, I realized I was a little bit low, but nothing crazy. So I had full extension and as I was landing, my hand touched the bar. So I had my hand grabbing the bar as I was landing. Well, because I landed a little bit low, or I was a little bit low on my takeoff, my wheel had already touched the ground as my hand was uh, holding the bar, but it was a little bit too late. The sandy, dusty uh, lander, my tire kind of low-sided underneath me, and when it dropped, my ankle got caught into my, uh, into my bike, into my frame, and as it came down my shoulder, the bike went forward, I was going sideways onto my shoulder, and my foot got caught and snapped. Uh, but, so what was I thinking like when it happened? Well, when I looked down my ankle, well first off I did my usual check, I tapped myself over and I was like, all right, shoulder's still good, hands moving, no injury, I was feeling pretty good, and then I looked down my foot. It's, there wasn't really a pain, but there was a sensation of just like a weird feeling through my body, and I heard like a cracking noise of some sort, but I really didn't think too much of it until I saw my foot. And when I saw my foot, my foot was, it was my left foot, was broke off this way. It was slammed it this way, and it was clearly dislocated for sure at that point. Um, luckily, since I was in my friend's backyard, uh, he saw me through his window and immediately came to my rescue as I was trying to crawl towards his uh, back porch door. Um, at that point, we went to the hospital and I called my fiance to come, come meet me. So there we go. That's that's pretty much the premise of how this whole thing started on July 3rd. Uh, I go to the hospital. Uh, luckily, the hospital was amazing, and they got me through. Uh, back to the ER as quick as they possibly could, went through all my paperwork, and I was definitely very lucky about that. When I got back to my emergency room, uh, I was freezing at that point. I was still in my gear, covered in sweat, and honestly I was going through a little shock, and I was absolutely shaking. So they put me in blankets and was preparing for my relocation, uh, resetting my ankle. 
So as this is all going down, my fiance arrives, uh, my buddy who dropped me off he heads back to his house, and we are in the midst of things. Um, at this point, the pain isn't, the, your adrenaline is running so fast that you really don't feel the pain. The pain isn't really going through um, completely. Yes, it hurts for sure, it feels weird, but it is complete shock at this point. But they put me underneath, they, um, I don't know, wake anesthesia, uh, midnight, or I'm trying to think what it's called exactly, but it's anesthesia where you're still cognitive and you're still awake, however, you don't really remember. The exact medicine I was on, uh, they call it the milk of, anesthesia, uh, milk of amnesia because you just don't remember anything even though you're still awake. Well, they put me up with this medicine and I am definitely not there mentally during this time. I guess I was talking to him and it was going good, but they reset my ankle and I awoke from this uh, midnight sleep type of dream I was having, which was uh, ironically mountain biking. I was dreaming of mountain biking while I was going through my reset of my ankle. So completely weird situation, but luckily there was no pain at all for me. I woke up, my foot was reset, and it was already cast in a soft cast. Um, after getting off the or while I was in the table and was going through all my paperwork pre and post, uh, they let me know that. Actually, excuse me. Before they reset my ankle, let's let's make up one huge thing. They did X-rays before uh, before I came in and had my ankle reset. So they did the X-rays, and in the first analysis of it, they said that I had a bimalar fracture, which is this two bones of your ankle breaking. And they were really excited because they said they were going to be able to set my ankle and then just hard cast me. But right before I was going to get my ankle reset, the doctor literally walked in about five seconds before he was uh, about to set it and said, Look, uh, the radiologist looked at it again and it is way worse than we expected. We're about to set your ankle, but you will have surgery. The worst part is, tomorrow is July 4th and there is no doctors uh, who will be able to do it on the 4th of July. So you're going to have to wait until the 5th of July to have this ankle surgery done. So that was obviously a huge shocker uh, right before I was about to be put um, underneath anesthesia and have my ankle reset. Well, back to where we were before. I am after my reset. They pretty much give me some crutches and say, there you go, here's some pain medicine. Uh, try to get a hold of an orthopedic uh, as early as you can July 5th so you can go in. So, needless to say, I get a hold of the doctor, uh, well, July 4th, let's just say I don't really remember it, it was just kind of a blur of experience, I was just laid up on a couch, miserable, and honestly was just surviving. Uh, it was super rough, I had uh, pretty much just, was barely able to get out of bed to go to the bathroom, but I pretty much just laid there, just hanging out. But back where we were, July 5th called the doctor and uh, they pretty much set me up an appointment that day at 2 o'clock, uh, excuse me, 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock to go see the doctor. So I called around 8 o'clock, they were able to get me in at 10, 10.30. Uh, I go in at 10, 10.30ish and see the doctor. Well, the doctor does some x-rays again, uh, the orthopedic does the x-rays again and pretty much says, hey, are you ready to go? We are going to do surgery on you today at 2 o'clock. So what a shocker. Go in for just like a checkup to figure out what's going to happen and immediately go into surgery at 2 o'clock. At that point, uh, I knew this was going to be a wild ride and the doctor briefly said something on the lines of you won't be able to walk for 8 weeks. 6 to 8 weeks minimum and you're going to start walking in your boot afterwards and have a lot of PT to do. Uh, physical therapy to do after the surgery. So it was all a blur and a whirlwind of just emotions at this point. Um, I call my parents and tell them what's going on. They live about six hours away or four to six hours away depending on how traffic is and they pretty much immediately drop what they're doing to come meet me after my surgery that day. So I go through my surgery. I'm prepared. I'm in bed and uh, pretty much just just nervous, just nervous and a little bit worried about what was about to happen. Uh, this was my first adult surgery. I had uh, a surgery when I was younger on a tonsil, so it wasn't that big of a deal back then, but this was a lot different scenario. 
And um, yeah. So I go through anesthesia, I come back to after my surgery, and I'm informed I have nine pins and a plate in my ankle. And like I said before, at this point I'm pretty much just out of it, but they were telling my parents and my fiance that I will be on bed rest for six to eight weeks and I am unable to put any weight on my foot at all. So this is July 5th. So the weekend comes by, my parents are in town, take care of me with my fiance, uh, and the parents finally leave. And on Monday, after my surgery, my fiance breaks her foot, which is just terrible. Taking care of me, she was running down the stairs and broke her foot. So this has been a whirlwind of an experience at this point. All right, so she breaks her foot. Luckily, it wasn't too bad, but she's in a boot and crutches for a little bit, and her parents come and take care of both of us for a week. So at this point, uh, the point, the week after surgery was just kind of just not too fun. I start feeling better, but it's just pretty much on pain meds the whole time. And I was just sitting there and just trying to get through the day. And it was a lot of napping. Your body's exhausted. And honestly, all you want to do is just eat and sleep. Uh, that's it. So next you know, my next appointment comes by. And I believe my appointment was on the 14th or 17th. I don't remember the exact day. I can look back and see exactly. But um, they are able to take my soft cast off and I get my boot, the boot that you saw in the video, uh, and there's some pictures I'm going to post up here that shows some of how it looked after. Uh, I finally get to see my ankle for the first time, and it is super swollen, absolutely black and blue, and I have dissolvable stitches on both sides, and I, I don't even know how many I had. Uh, but I was able to move my ankle, and this was a crucial, this is only about a week or week and a half later, and I'm already able to start doing early movements with a band, just making sure I don't have too much stiffness in my ankle. And this was a real game changer, just mentally and emotionally at this point, because sitting on the couch for a full week is absolutely miserable. And just being able to move your foot a little bit is such a game changer, just so you can see some progress and see that your foot is it, it's moving. Um, but it was absolutely swollen and it was a little bit painful to get moving but it was an awesome just success to have that. Alright, so now I am another week goes by my fiance has an appointment with the same orthopedist I have because she too was her orthopedist uh, for her broken foot and I get the go ahead. This is about another week, a week and a half later she has her appointment and uh, she tells my fiance that I am able to uh, go to the pool and start swimming because I used to be a competitive swimmer as long as I don't kick and I just let my foot float and I am able to start going to the gym. So this is about three, three and a half weeks after my surgery and I get the go ahead. I'm going to post a video of my first swim uh, just up on the screen and you'll see I get my first swim in and that was absolutely awesome and it was good and I just really uh, just it felt good it just felt amazing just being able to pull it in because it felt normal um, a week goes by and all this craziness happens you say I don't get to swim or work out really uh, during this next week but now it's been over a month long so we're talking about four and a half five weeks after my surgery and now I am swimming and I am working out again and uh, here's another video of me swimming, and here is my first workout in the gym. And now this is game changer. My foot is feeling, so five and a half weeks later, about five weeks later, my foot feels great. It doesn't hurt too bad. Don't hear, and, and when I say it, it feels great, it feels great compared to how it was. It is definitely nowhere near perfect. I still can't put weight on it. Um, the pain is still there. My ligament pain and my nerve damage is still there, but it does feel better significantly better from when it first happened of course so that is awesome so now I am about I'm five and a half weeks this is actually the five and a half week mark that I was talking about I am now swimming and working out and this is where we are today um, so how am I feeling and what what's really going on um, well one it is crazy how much your body changes when you're being on the couch for five and a half weeks. Um, 
as you can see from the mountain biking and any of my previous videos, I love the outdoors. I love traveling, I love photography, and I love fitness and dieting and just keeping your body in shape and just well. And it was a game changer and it's been a game changer seeing how much my body has lost its muscle and specifically my left leg is completely shrunken at this point. And it's way smaller than my right leg. And, and it's difficult to uh, go through that, but just the encouragement of being able to swim and be normal again in the gym and just being able to just crutch around and go have a meal at a restaurant is a game changer. And I, if you're going through this and you're not at the five week stage, it is gonna go by so fast. And once you get to the point where you can start crutching around and start being able to get out of the house, it is amazing. It is awesome and it is definitely, uh, you, you just feel great. Just sitting outside right now, um, it's such a change since when I was on the couch about a week or two in, I didn't even want to look outside. So, this is the first update. This is where I'm in right now. I'm able to start swimming. I'm able to start working out. I'm gonna start posting videos about my road to recovery from this point on. I have my notebook and this has my workouts I'm gonna be doing and just kind of give y'all an opportunity to follow along with me as I recover from this injury. Um, a trimalar fracture with dislocation is a pretty severe injury and it could have been, it could have been way worse. I could have had uh, a million other different type of injuries or diseases or anything. So I'm very thankful and blessed to feel this good and I'm excited to share with you my journey and I hope that y'all can be inspired to get through this injury and just keep pushing on. Um, it will get better. It is a difficult situation, but uh, I believe you can do it. I'm going through it and life will not be different once I get through this injury. I know that once I'm able to get through this injury, I'll be able to mountain bike again, climb, do photography, and do the things I love. And even though it will be tough and there's me a hard situation where like I'm gonna have to relearn how to walk again and get my endurance back up, it is gonna be totally worth it. So please just subscribe and just follow my journey. Uh, thank you for everything and just like, thanks, peace.